everybody welcome my chaotic creatures and benevolent beings to tonight's stream uh tonight's beloved delinquents tell bold details to bring delight to all of you um if this is your first time joining us on five percent chance hello welcome this is the chance of tbd it is our talk show where we introduce games talk about post games things like that but tonight we are introducing our nude game that is going to be streaming next week. Um, the Dread Carnival, a Call of Cthulhu game that is going to be run by our illustrious GM. And at this point in time, I'm going to pop over to introductions to Chris, my dear and darling. For a split second, I was going to ask which Chris, because this is going to be fun. But hello. <laughs> I'm not the one running I... the game. I know. That was the only clue I had. <laughs> but hello, I am Chris. Um, I am going to be the GM for this Call of Cthulhu adventure. Um, you can find me at D&D Imposter on all social medias. And I'll popcorn next to me if that's what we're doing. Yeah, Erica? Yeah, yeah okay. popcorn. Uh, off to Jonathan. Oh, God. Uh, uh, hi, everybody. I am Jonathan. You might know me as Latinos Against Spooky Shit. Um, and I'm going to be playing Isai Guerrero. Um, both he and I are he him pronouns and I'm super stoked for this it's going to be wild and crazy and I'm not sure what to expect from this Call of Cthulhu game in terms of what fears we're going to face but I'm excited <laughs> yeah. uh, fear? what? yeah it's supposed to be a happy go lucky adventure we're um, just going to the carnival right? we're going to Six Flags? Yeah, yeah right. Well, uh, well, we can't we can't go to Six Flags for the I'm hoping so someone so wins me a teddy bear. <laughs> I, we're all competing for uh, their hearts. That's the whole. That's the whole it's one. A, actually, it's a dating show. Uh, it's a dating uh, simulator. There you go. Oh, those are all the rage right now. It's called right. Carnival Daddy. Carnival. <laughs> Be right back. Changing the name now. Carnival Daddy. Daddy. Carnival. Look, I feel like we could still use the art we got. Carnival for this one. knowledge. We just like do a pink instead of green. <laughs> Jonathan popcorn. I'm gonna popcorn it, and we're just gonna go straight down below me, and it's Scarlet. Oh hi, I'm Scarlet. I play a lot of D and D and Pathfinder on Twitch, and talk about it on TikTok and Instagram. And this will be my first Call of Cthulhu game, which is so rad because I have been thinking about Call of Cthulhu long before I was invited to this game. So I'm like, I am living my hopes and dreams right now and uh, i'm gonna be playing uh sam who is a is she, she's a teenage tomboy girl that's all i'm gonna share for now but if <laughs> you ask me the right questions you can learn more about her and uh i'm gonna ping pong it to other chris it me. Hello, I am Other Chris, uh, known as several other nicknames that I'm not going to mention on stream for fear of being canceled. Hello! Uh, you can also find me at Hamasamakun on various social media platforms. I talk about D&D, &D, mostly in the realm of bad ideas that you probably shouldn't do, but it'd be really funny if you did. Um, I also stream on Twitch, but that's mostly just sitting around and chatting. Uh, I enjoy doing that. That's my full-time job now. Um... Oh, character. I play Rory Choi, a uh, just a fun-loving little dude, definitely not traumatized. He's he's so cute, you guys, and just uh I go by any pronouns, they go by I haven't thought that far ahead, but oh, I, I'm I gonna say to he him. Yeah. Did you <laughs> I saw the name change to it's, other Chris? It changed to other Chris in the show. Oh. I'm unionizing. This is this is ridiculous. Unionizing with you when you only? Yes. All the other Chris's I can't the world. have my own back okay, all what's even other the Chris's unite. <laughs> yeah, oh. If there's a Chris okay, in chat, if there's a Chris options. that starts with an X, we need you. So <laughs> this is the options. It could either be Chris and other Chris, or it's Christopher and Chrysanthemum. <laughs> Oh, no. I'll be other Chris before that happens. Chris, I don't like it. No. Nope. Chrysanthemum is the name that my mom, like, calls me by. <laughs> so, that's gonna be real interesting. That's so cute. Uh, every day. Uh, every day my that's life. what you call a nat 20 on oh your shenanigans. My <laughs> lord. If you haven't realized, everyone, that this is going to be a very chaotic game, I hold... Tonight they are my cats to wrangle. Um, I, Chris, I'm the one with like the uh, fucked up eye. Our original Chris Prime. Um, 
I feel it's bad like for the, you. It's like the Chris's in Hollywood. There's just always a pack yeah. of Chris's, and they're all delightful. Every I'm just going to run an Oops All Chris's like game one day. <laughs> it's all Chris's. I'm gonna pop on, hear me out. Five percent chance. I, so I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm done. I'm sorry. I'm so charm. <laughs> Chris and the mama. Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, okay, charm, charm, bullied. Charm, charm popcorn. Hi, I'm Charm. You can find me as Old World Charm on Twitch as a professional dungeon master full time, uh, and you can find me on TikTok under the same uh, nom de guerre, uh, Old World Charm, where I do. Uh, D and D talk, or sometimes Hagrid themed thirst traps, and uh, yeah, so that's that's kind of what I'm up to. And uh, oh, no. yeah, I play uh, I play uh, Frankie Bouchon the fourth. Um, Everyone has a last he... name but me. God damn it, Sam. Sam. <laughs> Sam. Uh, Sam. Yeah, hit, hit, hit me or Frankie with your your most creative pronouns. Uh, we're good. And then uh, yeah, he's a really awkward kid. <laughs> who is steeped in his love for film noir and uh, uses it as a uh, coping mechanism against the immense pressures of social interactions. He wears um, a fedora. He does. He wears, yeah. he he wears was a that fedora. Kid. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah. I was that kid. But he does not know uh, to run down the hallway. No, that's me. I do that. I wore hats all of the you time. Wanna, you want to know how I embarrassed myself at that age? I thought The Matrix was so cool that I started slicking my hair back, wearing dark sunglasses and a long trench coat to school. I did that, but anime. A vibe. <laughs> It, it was. It's giving <laughs> Trinity. It's giving <laughs> Trinity. Uh, all right. Incredible. Yeah. It was like, have fun, like, Erica. On that note. <laughs> Lord in heaven. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, I don't know if I missed out in, on anything. Uh, I think, yeah, I think you it. got it all. Yeah. You said, uh, I mean, chaos has been happening around you, so if there's anything else you want to say, you're more than welcome to. Wow. While we all collect our thoughts. Hmm. Charm. That, that's so, it. That's I the think, most silence that we've had this entire time. Um, so for all of you who are joining us, if you have any questions for this cast as we get started and talking, um, feel free to pop them over into chat. Um, we will be monitoring that so that our conversation isn't as chaotic and maybe we have a through line. Um, but first and foremost, I do have a few questions. Um, this is going to really just start with a kind of like a teaser for Chris. Oh. Um, Chrysanthemum or Christopheles? Oh, okay. <laughs> Christopheles? <laughs> Christopheles. <laughs> What's so funny is I once like tried to convince people that that was my name. Stop and, like, taking all of my it. weird Chris name. <laughs> Yo, I, I've been living by the bit since day one, all right? I feel like you, your brain has, like, oh. taken over mine like a tadpole, and now I'm just your mouthpiece, and I don't realize. So fun. I can't wait. You joined the hive oh my mind. God. I know, oh, right? Oops, all Chris's. So, so as we're talking, I really do want chat to know, as much fun as we're having, this will be a horror game. <laughs> and the real horror is having how, me in like, the game. You know, it, it, I, I think it will be scary because it'll be such a contrast because I think all of us are experienced enough players that we know how to accept the vibe and like our characters are goofy they're teenagers they're, but they're, we will be scared and our characters will be terrified and I think that we would know how to embody that yeah yeah just about I, channel I tax season yeah. yeah no it's it's gonna be one of those like uh, those fun games where y'all are really just meeting each other, knowing about each other and like personally meeting each other in like our pre-production. The amount of fun y'all have had. <laughs> I love it every time that like we're all together and I cannot wait to just see how this translates into this <laughs> very normally let me let me put it this way normally very intense and kind of on the edge of your seats as players kind of game with that chris my dear darling oh god oh the other one would you like to give I'm, a little teaser of Waltz. like what might the audience want to might be uh 
we just got four? we got we got four friends from high school like freshman and sophomore year just going to the carnival that's only in town for one day not weird at all yeah. not weird at all no not weird at all the yeah, frankie isn't a 38 year old small man no. by the, way, people are wondering <laughs> the more you say it the more we believe the, the more opposite yeah. right he drinks a 38 year old man would like not a normal have to person oh normal water <laughs> Because uh, there's normal. variations, you know, not polluted water. Yeah, because I am just you know. red water. We all know that. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm I am just blind. a normal human know. man with normal human hands. <laughs> I, I got got this with from down the street. I was handing hands. it out. It was fine. He's gonna show up to our group. Greetings, my normal teenagers. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> if you can see oh, what's the up, chaos fellow kids? These four. I think my favorite part about the show is that I don't really have to plan shit. I wanted to do a mini series at the carnival, and I waited till they sent me their backstories, and that's the story we're running with. <laughs> Wait, I, you're I supposed to yeah. send backstories? I just told you to hurt me. I don't. I don't know where we're. I'm just gonna draw from my own like twisted childhood. You too. I, I, mean, I will say that this the is the only way I know how to embody a teenager. This is probably the first game for me that I've been able to really self insert. Mm -hmm. regarding my experiences my character and and for me at least this character my real name is is jonathan my middle name is isaiah and so i named my character isai isaiah uh as kind of a love letter to my family for like not dealing with spooky shit in the way that i grew up so this is very much a self-insert for me and i'm very excited to see what parts of you guys are embodied in your character? This is absolutely a self-insert with a, f a few tweaks. Uh, real life, Sam was homeschooled, so I didn't get to go to high school. So this is oh. if, if I got to go to high school. Alternate version you? Yeah. <laughs> My self insert is actually Charm's character, but uh, we both swapped our character. <laughs> was Charm supposed to be Rory in high school? I, yes, I, absolutely. I don't. Interesting. I don't think I knew enough about anime to pull that off. Back then. Uh, mine is just oh. mine is my Korean self insert. This is if I had like grown up slightly oh, more trenchant. I, I was that. Korean in high school. Yeah, no, how hundred percent. Right. Yeah, no, I remember this. <laughs> I, I, there was a Korean barbecue right next to the community college that I was attending as a teenager, and kimchi was in my blood at the time. I, I'm. I don't know how to segue out of that. <laughs> no, I was I, it's a I, question. I, I, support, you. I support you. I feel like our little like group definitely goes to Korean barbecue after karate 100%. class yeah. all the oh, time. 100%. Like the all you yeah. can eat, you we, like, grill it know right the owners on the pan. By name. Yeah, but I can't pronounce them, but you can. It's Hank and Susan. You just struggle. So. <laughs> I've just convinced you that their name's something super complicated in, in the Korean. Like, yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's uh, Kim Si Hyun, and uh, over there is uh, Yeon Jun. Kim it's, it's... Si Hyun. Oh, dare you? All right. <laughs> Only Chris gets that reference. How dare you? <laughs> so, as we're talking about character creation, and you have already kind of. Uh, talked about how you are all friends by being in the karate club. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> outside of finding that uh, that through line that made you friends, um, what has been the most interesting part of... Because this is the first game for, I think, most of you of playing Call of Cthulhu, if not all of you. First time. First time. Yeah, first time. How has this moment of like creating characters been different from say playing D&D &D, from playing other TTRPGs from playing Pathfinder and things like that because I feel like there's there's so much difference from Call of Cthulhu where it is very much character based it's not stat based for me it was the character creation portion that we all sat down and did together rolling our <laughs> stats and everything that was probably the most confusing and the most simple character creation i'd ever done because mm -hmm. we're not used to it right um yeah. right. but then after that like once the stats were done i'm like oh there's no way to optimize so that i can hit 16 times in a turn this is dumb but it was still cool and i still enjoy it and the fact that we all got to create a story 
connected to each other because karate club started not even related to this plot we <laughs> made that up i was like i just want to play a karate girl but i don't know if i want to and all of you were like well all if you don't want to i will and then we were all like let's just be in karate class together it's within the first <laughs> 45 <laughs> seconds Literally. Of us yeah. all of us committed to the bits it was so the, it was the game of jenga where one of you made a cobra kai joke that just went for the bottom of the jenga pole and just I... pulled it out from the center <laughs> Everything just crashed after that. This is a yes. self insert. I picked that archetype because that was me <laughs> in that age group, and so I was like, "That Same. would be really fun to play." That's what I yeah. think of when I think of a nerdy teenager. I love that. It just yeah. fits oh, the bill for all of us. I I committed so hard to this karate club karate club bit that like i gaslit myself into thinking that's what this plot was and so when we released like dread carnival like we're gonna fight like clowns and stuff i'm like what are we doing wait hold on where are we i thought we were fighting sensei derek like is this Uh, am i in the wrong game did i show up to the wrong session zero i thought we were all like in agreement on it Uh, it's gonna be so wonderful yeah it's great i i love the character creation element of this because the dm straight up says do whatever you want you can't possibly break this game but chris it was never about breaking the game it's about breaking the game master and that's what we're gonna have fun doing (laughs) breaking you oh i feel like it's more about the game master breaking each of you I have Please. to un- I have to unravel I mean, new territory. It it... Chris has played too many games with me. <laughs> I know. I'm, y'all oh. are self inserting, and I know some of you a little bit better than others. So. Oh Christ! <laughs> <laughs> Should have thought twice before self inserting. What I, I'm I never do. Inserted harder than others. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> what I'm really excited is I have been so obviously character creation is not about making a very powerful godlike character like Pathfinder mm-hmm. and D and D. You know, once you're tenth level in D and D, you're the most powerful people in the area. You are uh, gods. <laughs> yeah. You and run the game now. So to play a game that is not combat focused, but you're still extremely vulnerable, where you play normal people without any special abilities. In fact, our abilities are so I don't have a single skill that has a over 50% chance of being successful, I don't think. Um I'd have to look back at my character sheet. But yeah, so it's like you're going to fail, but I feel like that's kind of the point, and that's going to be what makes the story happen, and I cannot wait to see what psychological horror, and, like, I've been, I recently bought uh, this book, and it's been making me think of our Call of Cthulhu game. This is a Pathfinder game that is more cryptid and spooky, mm-hmm. but but you're still powerful in, in Pathfinder, so I can't wait to feel vulnerable and try to just use creativity of what's around us rather than looking and being like, okay, well... He's dying, so I'm going to cast Lay on Hands. And uh, yeah, so yeah. that's what I'm excited for. This is going to be the most different TTRPG I've ever played that it breaks away from like the D&D Pathfinder high fantasy, power fantasy mold. And I think it's going to open, it, it'll be like a gateway drug to all the other TTRPGs out there that are different. I realize that some of our like viewers and people who are in chat who are watching this might not know exactly how the dice work in Call of Cthulhu. Um, it's like every other day. You yeah. roll them, and then you read the number on them. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah if but... you can't read like me, then you have somebody else make up a number and hope that... <laughs> you just say a number, and yeah, then the Dungeon Master... Was... <laughs> or I, what is the Dungeon Master called in, a, in Dad- Call of Cthulhu? Daddy. Daddy. <laughs> Daddy. Okay, so Daddy tells you what happens. Daddy helped us optimize our character sheets. For me, character creation was not very different from usual, because I literally... I throw together D&D characters the same way I did this, where it's like, oh, here's stats. I'm not very good at most things in this game, but like, oh boy, is my character backstory pretty great? So I am going into this with like the same aesthetic and vibe that I do all my games, which is like, please don't hit me, I'm gentle? But I'm yeah. pretty clear just trying to... But I'm pretty. So, that question was more of a segue to Chris to explain how <laughs> No, I was... Ex- no, I was just answering you, from the Chris, last the question. Other- oh, I know! <laughs> I was answering the last question. I'm gonna turn! Christopheles! 
Christophe I was letting <laughs> other people answer the other question. I didn't get a turn, so I just decided to answer. Go Look on, do the dice you. thing. <laughs> Christmas <laughs> present. Oh, Christmas. <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> Christmas. Oh my god, am I back to Chris on the overlay now? It's yeah, oh my god, so are. refreshing. Right, you are Chris just gonna be. Name. You're gonna be Chris plus some other conglomerate of words, and then just straight Chris will be our uh, daddy. Yeah. How dare you call me straight? Hey, My apologies. <laughs> and on that note, if I just if I I'm say so Chris, sorry, I'm really daddy. Yes. <laughs> um, but no, for for dice for Call of Cthulhu, you can throw your d20s away. You will be using uh, you're gonna be rolling percentile dice. So you have a d100 and a d10. D10 is going to be your second number. The D100 will be the first number because you're trying to roll anywhere from 1 to 100. The goal is to roll as low as you possibly can because the players, there are three levels of difficulty, kind of like in D&D. You have some, like, you'll be rolling at disadvantage. Even though we do have a, a type of disadvantage in Call of Cthulhu, really you have something that's a regular skill check, a hard skill check, and an extreme skill check. So sometimes you'll hear the players say, I passed on a hard, I passed on an extreme check. And I was waiting to see who chuckled at that one. I've noted I all of you fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but it's, it's so I know, yeah, Trent was the only one, only one. Jonathan almost got away with it. I, but, I, so I, I, Charm didn't go like, this, but there was a bit of there was a the pot. teeniest there was a <laughs> the beard. I was, just, I was actually remembering. I, I saw his eyes. To code our language as raging <laughs> for extreme. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Raging yeah. success. Raging. Raging. I, raging. I, I, I hard success. Raging hard success. We have normal. Oh, hard. Kind of was, I'm nope. raging. Uh, <laughs> it was helpful for us to like figure out the game, but Chris had no idea what we were talking about. <laughs> now, we knew what we were talking about. Get that yeah. fucking program. Look, majority rule. We're technically in the right here. Don't <laughs> <laughs> oh, booze me. I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, yeah. Your booze mean nothing. Besides, I see what makes you cheer. Your booze mean nothing. Besides your D100s, you will hear, you will likely hear me ask the players to roll a sanity check. Those are often D6s. Sometimes I'll go D8. And that's if they have interacted with some with something that is going to reduce their sanity. Because unlike D&D, as I told all my players, unlike D&D, where as you play longer, you start leveling up and you get more powerful. In Call of Cthulhu, how they start session one is probably the most, quote unquote, powerful. They will be the entire game because they will be getting weaker and weaker based off of the choices they make. <laughs> it's so exciting. <laughs> what I love choices. Uh, the silence of the fear that's all struck into you. Well, because once <laughs> once Chris starts explaining it, I remember what we're playing, and I'm like, oh, uh -huh. right. Yeah, uh, remember what happened to yeah. me? The ha you, really do you, end. This isn't, hair, this isn't, uh, this isn't this Karate Club anymore. This is the most um, high-volume and high-spirited game, I think, or stream for this group of people. Uh, now, I, I do believe have... contract, you're paying for therapy afterwards? Uh, <laughs> is that not what this is? Oh no! Look into that benefit package. It's very small. Fine. For you gotta, you gotta... <laughs> all it said was "ha." I don't know. <laughs> ha. Uh, I think it's like HMSA. Like yeah. it's probably an acronym for the. <laughs> what is our coverage? Health Does my insurance? Oh, the... Yeah, there you go. That's what it was, guys. So okay, I'm like going through my mind because we've talked about a lot of things and Sorry. all of our ADHD is going. Out I don't know what you're talking today. about. <laughs> um. So What's something that y'all are <laughs> interested in and kind of <clears throat> whenever so diving into this world, we've had a one shot, we've had a uh a little bit of a, a session zero point five where y'all got to play feel the mechanics, things like that, and have heard the story in kind of like the world that Chris is presenting. I want to know what y'all want to do. Like, how do you think this is going to go? I think it'll be funny, haha, -ha, until it's not. And <laughs> which case... 20 I minutes in. Yeah, like, yeah. not even 20 minutes. I give it, like, maybe 10 before it's like, all right, you got to the carnival. 
Uh, but I, I think once that happens, like, I'm really keen to see how everybody's characters develop because in the one shot, we got a taste of that, like, very serious, like, serious, serious. But honestly, the only thing that stands out in my mind is A Sensei Derek and, and, uh, Frankie's fedora so I'm, i, I want to see I how, it, how it progresses going into another dimension and thinking that i was drowning and then y'all were like what's wrong with you and i was like we gotta go it was really intense didn't which tell us a canon. single thing about that mm -hmm. well yeah it's not canon which is not canon yeah it was a nightmare it was a nightmare yeah. it was just a bad dream we it's... always have those dreams yeah. before tournaments yeah. like you know it's, what it's yeah and sam didn't tell y'all shit you didn't that's ask. Something, that's something that I learned mechanically. <laughs> we're really bad at sharing information and communicating. I think we're so used to D and D where it's just assumed that we this is knowledge shared mm -hmm. that we we need to get into the habit of. So I, I need to get into the habit of. I just did like not me. share because in my self insert I thought. I just hallucinated, and I'm not going to tell people that I just hallucinated. No, for sure. <laughs> but see, if, right. if, if someone shook me and asked me, I think that I think that's what we need to do. We need to ask each other. We need. What did, we need. What did yeah. you see? Because so there, there, there was that bit at the end where um, all all I said was uh, get the statue. I didn't tell you to break the statue or what to do with it. I just said get yeah, it. I just had it. <laughs> And you're just like, what do I do with it? After I suplex <laughs> Sensei Derek to the ground, and I'm like, no, that's because, like, a good point. Like, during that one shot, my character didn't see anything. Like they were just hanging <laughs> out. Oh, out. Y'all were like getting like attacked by you Cthulhu, heard... and I'm just like, you guys are so. For the for the Yo, audience, perky. I ran everyone, everyone, uh, all Let's the players through. Yeah, yeah. I ran because they're the Karate Club. I ran them through a quick two hour learn how to play and learn how to roll as you go game of they went to a karate competition and they basically got lured into the meditation we did room. No karate. There was I mean <laughs> that's a little dancey that was dance. Not karate. Oh wait, that's clever, true. Actually our 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 daddy here our really cleverly gave us a fun time that is luring us into a false insecurity because it was all just like crazy, kind of trippy, but mostly fun moments with each other. That levity will be gone. I know this will be darker than a nursing home fight club. It's going to be nuts, and I'm pretty excited about it. A nursing home night club? Fight are club. these fight are club. these the old oh, missives God. that Frankie's going to bring into the game? It's like, ah, we... <laughs> I was there when I, I was chat. invited by grandma's party. He was talking like a man tied to a pan filled with rats. <laughs> Let I, me tell you. I love Frankie so much. <laughs> yeah, Frank, Frank. Yeah, Frankie's. Out. I'm so excited to role play Frankie with his candy cigarette. I, oh Lord! <laughs> what I, I really am excited to see, because like with any D and D story, I believe that there should be that hero's journey, right? The rise and fall of uh, of a story and the character arc and development. I'm curious to see how we change in these few episodes from who we are to to just what we have to turn into to survive. <laughs> um, we're gonna get so close, or we're extreme. gonna hate each other. One, of the, one of the two. One I could two. never hate Isai. Oh, Rory. I think we'll hate yeah. ourselves. Uh -huh. <laughs> I... <laughs> never mind. Smart. <laughs> Write that down, save it for uh... Yep, yep. <laughs> Saving it all for Rory's uh, like role play. This is extremely random, but Erica, I like your little glitters. Very, very, very much. Thanks! It's my weird shtick that I do every time I'm on stream. I always have glitter on. I don't think it's weird at all. I just fine. wear stuff like that on stream sometimes, and it's the best. It's it's my it's my lovely little I'm the glitter child of our production company, uh, in more than one ways. <laughs> um, all right. So talking about session zero, that y'all have just gone through. Um. Are, are there things that you learned about each other, I think, during that game, during that session? Yes. And so we talked about communication. We talked about, like, kind of how um, how that's important in this game and in this, this world. Uh, different I, than D&D &D type of things. I have learned this group is so willing to commit to the bit. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so much so that you have to be careful what you say or else it will be a bit 
But, but here's the thing, it because we've taken yeah. things that like were meant to be a bit, and then we've just found a way to make them canonically funny, but also it's part serious. of the lore. Yeah, yeah I yeah. love that. That's like, we were living such privileged lives, going to karate club, Korean barbecue, and now we have to go face like eldritch terrors. It's Dude, just we like got that our parents gave us twenty fucking dollars to go to this carnival. <laughs> That's, That's so practically a million dollars. That's oh, like wait, no, 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 no. Ride. This is 2025. Sorry, I'm... they gave us 150 dollars so that we could go on five oh my rides. My parents gave me 20. <laughs> <laughs> so I was trying to adjust for inflation. Parents? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I used to have a brother. Oh, uh, oh. Wait, we all, would we, we, all, we all have a dark little touch to our backstory. I suspect mm -hmm. now that the religious drama. Oh. Let's go. So, Interesting. Oh gosh. Yeah. I am very keen to see you how said everybody's that in backstory. A way that made me unsettled. <laughs> yeah, the time. Because that's oh, that's, that's one of the things I will say about this backstory is that this is the first time I've ever had a backstory tie in so closely and so tight to another character. Mm -hmm. Um and so for those curious, Rory and I have known each other for years in, in this campaign. Um and they have a very oh, unique relationship that's brought about the loss of family and friends, essentially. So my bro who went missing long ago. Like, yeah, did you guys want to share, share your, uh, how much are we allowed to you give can, away? You can, as you can much share as, as much or as little. I want to hear your guys' <laughs> backstory. You yeah, want to, you want to go like first, it. Jonathan? I mean, uh, Isaiah Guerrero, Isai Guerrero, uh, born in Mexico, raised in California. Um, so very much a, an immigrant trying to just make it and survive. So again, very self-insert for me, um, you know, came at a young age, came at like the age of three and just grew up next to the Choi family. And so they'd gone to school. I think, uh, we said Isaiah's were like, what, uh, a year older than, than Rory? Maybe a year Something and a half? like that. Like There's you were classmates with my brother and, and by like, like a year below or two. Yeah. By like yeah. association, we became friends, but it was more of like a friendship of convenience. Cause it's like, you know, we need a third, for, we need a third for the smash game. Like just, <laughs> just hop in kid. Like, We'd give you the disconnected control. Yeah, here you go. Just, just sit down and show. Gave me like the third party one that doesn't work and has like intense stick drift. You, you gotta wrap the cord around and pull uh, it so that it can egg. You know? Like, uh. <laughs> but uh, no, just growing up together and going to school. And I think Isaiah has always still held on to the hope of finding your older brother. And, yeah. Um, yeah. And that's that's very much what kind of drives him, not in the sleuth kind of way. That's that's Frankie, but just in the sense of like holding hope, and mm -hmm. uh, and just seeing how that relationship kind of blossoms and, and unfolds between you and him. I think it's really interesting in the fact that like, at least I think from Rory's perspective, it's like my brother is missing, but like feasibly, like I know we're close, but like, would you even be my friend like to this degree if he wasn't gone? Right. How long ago did he go missing? I believe I said like two or three years. Like it was like as we were like entering into like right before I think Karate Club like became a thing is probably so around where you're he, like, just, just now gone. the age of your brother when he went yeah. missing. I would have Ooh. been around. Yeah, I would have been as old as him. And Oof. this is the perfect segue and, and into my backstory. Your... What? Sorry. What got you into Karate Club for your character? Like what was the, the canon event? I will let Jonathan answer because this is still his moment for his backstory. Oh, sorry. No, because they're back for for Isaiah, Isai, um, honestly, it was not working with family. Uh, family was like, you know, hey, you gotta, you gotta like work with us, hang out with us after school, and Isaiah's like. But I've got this thing that I'm doing, though. And they're like, oh, you what is it? Right? Oh, you, what, just because well, it was the only yeah. thing available. <laughs> pretty much, and it's like, oh, I'm part of... Um, Amazing. Not not chess. I'm definitely not doing lacrosse. Robotics. Karate <laughs> club. Yeah, we're doing that. <laughs> yeah. Karate oh club. I would have loved to see a montage where you're failing at everything else, but then you get to karate. And I would say, Can we? I would love that so much. Just, oh, a, just, a, just a quick cut of different failures of, of yeah. I've been in karate club the whole time. I'm just watching you fail. Like, I have yet to tell you about this. I keep talking to you about it. Like, man, I just wish I could find a club that I fit into. Man, that's crazy. 
Have you tried chess? <laughs> <laughs> so close, but at the same time, it's like, have you, like, maybe, uh, I don't know, have you tried the Young Republicans of America? Like, I heard that their group. Like, <laughs> mm, 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 oh, fair, oh, fair. I show up to Chronicle. Oh, you're, you're, is this your first day too, Rory? Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> and meanwhile, Black Belt helping the fuck, helping Sensei Derek. He still thinks yeah. that I'm like Japanese. Um, I Rory's speaking saying arigato. He just puts it up Rory's like just yeah, it's my it first out. time. I want so oh. badly because like Rory is just this scrawny looking kid, but I want him to be so much stronger than he, anybody thinks that he is. Dude, Dude, I think, in my real sense. life karate classes, the skinny, wiry guys were the ones literally, literally. doing multiple flips. They were literally. crazy. I was I friends that. with that kid. It was terrifying. That man drop kicked me once. <laughs> like, please. <laughs> 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 Sorry, I had my very first date with that kid. I, you know what? <laughs> Once I too. realized his personality beyond doing Spider-Man landings was kind of, eh, then it didn't last very long. But you know, every like every dojo cool. has one. I don't. <laughs> it's like it's a requirement in the basement of that dojo. <laughs> mm. Just crawl through the vents like I'm here now. Like you do the uh, flip so... and then land like a Spider-Man, and I'm like, I'm so cool. I heard karate. <laughs> <laughs> but Rudy, what about your your character and kind of his progression through high school from your lens? From Rory's lens, so in the so in the source, not quite the same vein, but in the, like there is that common like thread between the two of them. Rory is actually the child of immigrants, but is the only one in that family who wasn't born in Korea because uh, Rory's parents are from Korea. They had their kid. They had like a successful business, so to speak. Uh, but due to various reasons that will probably unveil one day, uh, they moved over to America and they took their firstborn kid with them who like had a Korean name. They had like Korean friends. They knew the culture. And when they got in, they had a second kid, which was Rory. And he doesn't have that connect because they were always focused on the quote unquote, like Korean child, our firstborn. Cause that's like a big thing in Korean, uh, families is like, you're also there, but you know this, 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 this is the, this is, this is our, this is our ticket to the big time. This is our, this is our best child. The prodigy. Yeah, and so there's always been that disconnect between the two of them. But like, they, they were, they were brothers. They were close to a degree where it's like, I don't despise your existence. Like <clears throat> Rory would take the fall for all of like their quote unquote teenage rebellion because like Rory could take it because like, what are they gonna do? Punish him? They barely know he exists. Versus like the other kid where it's like. You know, he's doing stuff. I don't remember what I wrote that he did, but like he he let him tag along, made sure that like Rory wasn't being bullied as hard as he would have been. Um, but as they progressed through middle or middle school, like elementary school, and like they met uh, Isai, and like you know, Rory's always been like really good friends with, or at least from his perspective, he wanted to be really good friends, and that developed after his parents went on a trip and his brother went missing. Uh, all Rory managed to hear was this, like, terrible scream, and I think it was, like, a song or breathe. No, it was a whistle. They heard a whistle in the woods and and have not been the same ever since, and they've just sort of retreated into themselves, but uh, due to their friendship with Isai, they've been kind of getting themselves out there and becoming a little bit more opinionated, but a brunt of, I think, the friendship between the two of them, their bond is that, like... Isai talks for Rory when Rory doesn't, like, have the words for it or doesn't feel like saying anything or is too scared to. And that's, he's been very much reliant on, uh, on them for a very long time. And I think he's, he's kind of stepped into that brother role. Yeah, become my, become my bro and my I best friend. I love this. I wish I was your guys' dungeon master right now because... This it's is so amazing. It's great. And in terms nice. of like the brother, uh Rory has given up. Rory had fully believes his his brother died and is just like is essentially placating Isai cuz like, oh, you know, you were friends with him and like What's I'll, your I'll... brother's name? It's like Jesus. I, I, I was waiting Chris. for them to ask. It's Chris. God damn. <laughs> yeah, it's actually Chris. It's uh... Was what, what? he in karate or is that your thing? 
I would, I think that he, I don't think he was. He was like busy being in every other extracurricular that his parents like. Okay. I feel like from their perspective, karate is not worth their time. No. He was doing like, it was, and piano, yeah, and tennis, calculus. robotics, piano, calculus. I'm, calculus I'm, I'm sitting time. here, I'm trying to figure out who I know of you guys and would I know the brother or not. So I'm like listening to all this and I'm like, okay, let me line this up. Oh, here it is. I, th uh, I think we talked about it and I think we mentioned that like Jason. The, it was Jason. Jason. Your brother missing was kind of like the town story, kind of like every yeah. town has like that one kid who goes missing. Poor. Everybody knew of him. Yeah, I feel like Can having I... been friends for so long, they probably would have told you, and like maybe you would have joined Isai and and Rory off into the forest, just being like, yeah, you know, he was last seen around here. They saw a shoe wash up the river. It's oh, not his God. shoe, but like you know, we're hanging out. I you have go get food I have an this? insert that I would like to tie in with this. By all means, by all so, means. So I think that Sam has been part of Karate Club for a long time. And the reason, sorry, there's a bug. Uh, the reason is when her parents signed all of her and her siblings up for the Parks and Rec, they put her brothers in karate and her in art and piano and chess mm. where she might have met Jason. But she was jealous that her brothers got to be in karate and she pushed like, no, I want to be in karate, too. So as a younger girl, she got to join and ended up being more interested in it when her brothers. And this is actually my self insert. This is a true story. <laughs> Let's uh, go. They, they ended up not being as interested and I ended up being karate as my whole thing. So I feel like I would know you because it sounds like you've been in it for a while. So mm. I would know you for a while before you're like, hey, this is my friend, um, Isaiah. But I wonder if I would have known Jason from piano and from chess. And I think my character might be a year or two older than you. Yeah, I think it's you probably would have. It's possible that I might have had a secret crush on Jason. <laughs> oh, And his Lord. disappearance shattered me. And that's how we all bonded. It was my brother <laughs> getting shanked in the forest. I never and then we admitted had it. Frankie to find yeah. him. I never <laughs> told Honestly. him. Honestly, Frankie Maybe also had a crush Jason on him. Jason was always <laughs> Jason was always and I so had a crush nice on to Frankie. me. But I was not allowed to date because my parents are mm. religious, so I kept it to myself. And so yeah, I was just Honestly, super. That... Yeah, sorry. Uh, no, I. The, but with your permission. Go, no, with by all permission. means. Yeah. No, I love that. Honestly, it would have also tied in really well because like. I feel like if y'all had gotten close, other than, like, Isaiah, Jason doesn't really have that, like, lifeboat or, like, friends or ties to anything because his day would have been, like, extracurriculars and then, like, Show. study, night yeah. classes, and then, like... Sleep for five hours. And uh, for my, yeah, my parents were super. They put me in everything, so I feel like it would make sense. I would have been in those classes... Yeah, but once he disappeared, I was like, I don't, I don't want to be in these classes anymore. I'm just gonna do karate. You go to karate, and then you're like, oh, that's the, that's, that's his brother. Okay, this is his little right. brother. So maybe I, I would have such a weird relationship with you because the older you get, the more you look like him, and the more it hurts. Yeah. But I also, I don't want to blame you for it. But I'm also like a teenager who doesn't have emotional maturity. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's so good. <laughs> Rory's just trying so hard to make friends and being like, you know, this is our group. This is my family. You guys are the best. And then, like, meanwhile, Sam is just like, you look so much like your brother. I don't like this. Oh, oh God. So uh, that'll be, I'll have to consider how I react to different things. But yeah, okay. So I think you and I would have been in karate right for a while. Yeah, yeah we're, we're to comes the in. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we're just we're yeah. doing some more. It is really interesting because so, other than like extracurriculars and like having no time. When does oh, Frankie get here? Oh lord, what when I does Frankie get here? That. Um, <laughs> so Frankie, known as uh, at home, he's Francois uh, Francois Boussant the Fourth, uh, but he goes by Frankie because he doesn't need one more reason to get beat up. Um, oh no. <laughs> He's the son of Marie Boussant, who is a professional seamstress in town, and the son of the deceased Thomas Murphy, who was killed in action overseas when Frankie was very young. Um, he did not stay in any one place as a, a kind of a child of, of uh, an active military member, so he moved a lot. So he got kind of good at making friends, but never good at understanding the dynamics further than the initial social interactions. Um, and finally, after his father's passing, his mom settled uh, close to her father for support, because as a widow, she was 
really never the same after the loss of her husband. Um, and uh, later, uh, Frankie discovered that um, with the stress of losing her husband, she also he lost a potential sibling and the experience of that. So his his mom was just the shell of the joyous light that she was. Um, so he takes care of her as much as he can alongside his grandfather, who is Francois Boussant III. And he's been a positive male role model for young Frankie during hard times, even going so far to teach him basically what we all kind of need as young men. And that's kind of the ideology of, you know, the gentleman's code and, and uh, the scope on life that kind of lack with a female role model. So, the fedora. <laughs> so you're going to, you're going to see how that ties in. Yeah. So uh, this Francois is the Senior, fedora one. <laughs> yep. This is the fedora one. Francois senior was a freedom fighter during world war two against the German occupation when he was younger than Frankie is now. Um, and uh, Frankie is uh, very much into the ideology of his grandfather and how his grandfather has always kind of just been a, a, a very storyteller and introduced Frankie to cinema, uh, especially old cinema. That's why Frankie is very attached to the older genre of film noir and the black and white movies and, you know, Casablanca kind of vibes. Um, let's see. Um, his his family, his parent, or his mom, and his grandfather have never really bothered to trouble him over his unusual proclivity to pretend and even talk like he's in a classic noir film, which is kind of Frankie's big hitch socially. Is he kind of changes his voice to try to talk like uh, uh, the fancy American stars of that golden era? Um, they chalk this up to him coping with the death of his father, as watching old films was uh, the thing that he delved really deep into to. Um, to kind of just avoid thinking about anything, but also when his father was on tour, uh, on his multiple tours, nothing passes the time like delving into a movie. Um, Frankie got uh, really into taking on this persona to the point where he started working for other kids for doing detective work finding missing dogs, <laughs> whenever there's like a missing poster for animals, Frankie's on the job. Uh, whenever, whenever there's any opportunity to basically like hire a service out for, you know, um, whatever is the money appropriate of 2025, which is kind of where we're at, he would do it. Um, eventually he, on one of his uh, kind of a film noir kind of escapades, trying to find something uh, like a stolen watch, uh, he just got the shit beat out of him by the people who stole it because you found it and then you found the people who don't want <laughs> to be found and he just got absolutely wrecked. Um, oh, Lord. And yeah, so, so Frankie got basically like dunked on and had his uh, dad's uh, briefcase pretty much uh, thrown into a bush and peed on. And Frankie realized that his grandpa's too old to teach him boxing he needs to take karate, so he is he was the new much... kid. Why are we He's all so sad? Kid. Okay, uh, first of all, Sam is trying to become an assistant instructor, so she would absolutely immediately flock to you and try to help you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Karate yeah. Just club. To, yeah, yeah, just to He's impress your, so your project kid. <laughs> I'm the yeah, yeah, yeah. Kid. like like um, i'm like hey hey be and because i'm such a nerd i don't like i'm oblivious to cool not cool like like it's goes so i'm like no, no 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 here let me let me show you and then i look over at sensei Derek. like look i'm being a really good teacher right now yeah so so frankie <laughs> will be the newest to the group unless you guys have like ever hired him to help find something because i know i like the idea that you uh, at one point your... during the you hired me to help find your brother How... at and it's been oh, Frankie's biggest frustration that Frankie oh, solved every little minor case. case. <laughs> it's, it's I, Frankie has like, like he's got his little yarn board and shit like oh, about it. And, then I would um, know you from before because I'm invested in freaking Chase and Pat too. I right. I don't think Rory would have hired you. I think one of them one would have, have right, literally yeah, just John like one of these yeah. days we're playing video games at like one of our houses. Be like, look and hear me out. 
right there's this kid he's great he's so <laughs> smartest i've ever seen and i'm like are you it's the it's the it's the it's the it's the movie one isn't it it's Dude, like, it's like, like 50 movie, cases bro 50 all of them cases. were missing dogs half of them were mine <gasps> okay <laughs> i am it's like people feeling... purposely like his mom stole dogs for him he, to oh find. my god <laughs> I am just uh, feeling right. the wheels turning in Chris's mind about how much fuel yeah, can we you just them gave them. Yeah, hold on, get out. We're, this, yeah. is our, this is our time. <laughs> yeah, wait a minute. Both at, like, <laughs> uh, Those are one of the missing dogs. I have questions for the invisible sibling, um, Chrysanthemum, because I my wheels are turning. The invisible and sibling. The invisible I, sibling. I, I, is that Rory or the one who's missing? <laughs> it's it's, it's on oh, stream. Oh, funny. the invisible sibling. Oh my god. <laughs> Has Rory so, not been through enough? <laughs> okay, so here's the thing. I am right now, like in real time, forming my backstory based on your guys' uh, yeah, prompts. Yeah. How do you feel? Do you think it'd be more interesting if Sam had always had a silent, secret, unknown crush? on Jason or do you think that it would be more interesting if that was actually her teenage boyfriend like this, obviously they don't really kiss get physical I, but that was I like their her hand holdy no, but this that is so good though because I was gonna bring this up earlier but in a lot of like Korean households like Korean Korean households you aren't really allowed to date outside of like true Korean people mm -hmm. like even like Asians is like <laughs> no right so i think it would be really interesting if y'all were actually dating but like secret. super secret literally only like you i know that's and why you take the heat for everything else literally like where were thing. you and i'm just oh. like i don't know jason's the one to go find me i'm just hanging out in the park sticks religiously i would have been i would not have been allowed to have a boyfriend so it would have had to been secret on my end yeah. too I'm just the connective tissue between the two of you. You're like, hey, can you go tell your brother so and so? And I'm like, hi. Hey, oh my sure. god! It's like so bring him like this right thing now. I made for him in class. And I'm like, you can't just give it to him in poem. class. Can you give him this poem? Oh my god! I would have embarrassed my brother so hard. Just being oh like, no. he wrote you this piece of poetry. This and is you a know piece, this is a drawing he did, and it's like the crazy thing you've ever is seen. IRL Scarlet. The first time I fell in teenage love was about fourteen. 13 14 Aww. uh it was unrequited so whatever but so i understand those like intense feelings and if i'm my characters i think 16 i would be the same age as uh jason and isaiah yeah. uh yeah. if you're turning 16 15 now seven, it, it'd be around the same okay. so i can like imagine how like oh i really like him and then he disappears dead whatever uh and you're his little brother i'm just so here, just vibing <laughs> Oh my goodness! Oh, trauma bonding. So much fuel. Yep. So much fuel. I, yeah. I, I feel like you would have been more distraught about it than me, and I'm like, mm. and I'm the one who went through that shit. I'm like, you know, and now I in a I different get, I get way. More food. I All feel right. like maybe I take like maybe I see you in a brotherly kind of way, but I, I try think not. So. Yeah, like we're we've yeah. been karate together. I feel like Wait, of the karate hierarchy. I got <laughs> assisted. What? Oh, that's right. Do you guys, Sam is a brother. I go, oh, oh, there's a bit of canon. I think the chat's gonna find hilarious. So in karate class, I'm Sam. I have my hair tied up in a tight ponytail, oh, right. big <laughs> ears, freckles. It looks like Steven Seagal. Yeah. <laughs> I've been going on a Steven Seagal deep dive lately. It's hilarious. Oh when I'm in school, and I think my character's been homeschooled up until recently, I wear my hair down. And I go, and my teachers call me Samantha, and everyone else who are in my classes have not made the connection that Sam and Samantha are the same person, and Sam doesn't know that they don't know. So you guys are like... This is like a Hannah Montana. <laughs> you keep joining our groups, like, you keep joining our study group. Hannah Montana, but, Hannah, Montana, but, but I, Hannah has no idea. Yeah. Yeah. You're like so sitting good. at lunch with them. We're and like, guys, guys do you... Do you, you. All but of us assume that the it's, or, or, or we only talk up. about school. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. it's so separated. And I am oh. so oblivious until we're in karate class. I think we talk about more intimate things in karate class, like yeah. your brother, we're like like, yeah, like we're, we're, we're like we tight knit. Like, we're a team, right? Yeah. We talk about in class, we're just like, hey, did you get the project done? And so yeah, nobody knows that I'm the same person. My, real <laughs> question, my question is, do we hang out like outside of karate class? 
I think quick I know pause. we do things at, like, like you and you need to. Quick pause, quick pause guys... because hold on, this is we're getting into the area of things you guys can figure out off screen. Yes, oh, as well. Uh, we're doing uh, static cut in and we yeah. keep going down. So I'm gonna. Uh -huh. you if we know, wear our okay. geese, then we hang out outside. <laughs> yeah. I, I really, really, really yeah. wanted it no, canonical we're... that you guys introduced me to Mario Kart 68. <laughs> oh my God. That's the only one I could afford, man. I don't. <laughs> it's the knockoff. Eric, I just yell, yell over him. Yeah, no, I've been trying to like, yell. What's the objective of You're this too game? sweet. I'm sorry. All right. Yeah, you are really nice. I know, I'm so sweet. I'm so sweet and charming. Oh, don't just you wait. Um, <laughs> um okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, so you guys have been talking about a lot of things, and there's so much to talk about, and these are, I also really enjoy the fact that this is real weirdly turned into, like, a session 0. .75. Um, <laughs> we're um, ironing it out. Yeah, we're just, you're, you're ironing out all of those details, um, and there's things to find out during the game, but there's also things that I f feel that our audience should know before we start the game. Um, as in, like, we'll start easy with this, and then we'll get into the harder things. So, first off, okay. are y'all dressing up? Are you committing to these characters? That kind depends of on, yeah. depends on how expensive a gi is on Amazon. Hold on, let me check. Oh, I, I can't oh. fit into my old gi's. Uh, I'm not wearing my, my old gi's. I'm ordering a costume. You, <laughs> I might have if you guys would be wearing them to the carnival something. either. Yeah, it's like, and it's just saying, that did, did we go directly after karate Ricky. class? Did like, I can't no. put a fedora yeah. on the no, headset and all hold this on, hair. Hold on, maybe we're going to like the talent show at the carnival to like show off our little we're, demo team. Like, okay, hey. we're, we're, we're getting into the things we're figuring sorry, out. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. Uh, uh, co so, cosplay on stream. Uh, There's yeah. no reason why not. If I, I can find a karate gi, I will wear it on stream. Because Sam was, only wears it outside. Save for the scar, I look exactly like my artwork, so we're it's I'm doing it already. That's very true. I was told they can't show nipples, so no. I got damn it. <laughs> um <laughs> It wasn't me. Yes. <laughs> it wasn't yeah. me. I this also time. I personally uh feel that sometimes like wearing your character's like armor essentially. Uh because a lot of that's what like a costume is or like your clothing um really does help kind of not just you as a character but also like in the moment be like oh yeah no i'm now rory or i'm now uh sam or frankie or isaiah yes chris I just want to. I realize i didn't add it i should have been the one too and then it's just never gotten mentioned for the for the audience we are playing in modern day Los Angeles 2025. Yeah. So a lot of that cosplay is just, it could just be regular clothes as well. Because like, again, <laughs> these are high schoolers, except for Frankie. Definitely like, not wearing mid to yeah. like mid 2020s. You're clothes. showing up in like <laughs> full trench like tweed. Yeah. And <laughs> trench coat. When we were Sam. first introducing our characters, I'm so sorry. I, mm -hmm. My initial instinct was to name uh what is it name uh pronouns and then race because i was gonna be like oh dragonborn tiefling and then i realized <laughs> right modern day i'm it's me i'm hi i'm just a human <laughs> we're all playing humans oh no i'm playing a tiefling <laughs> uh, no. i'm playing in a, a an american a italian uh <laughs> i'm playing a kasamar can i so this is also, no that's me i'm so the korean speaking of speaking of race um because you all come from different backgrounds um both personally and characterly are you planning on incorporating different um cultural things when it comes to the spooky um this question may be directed definitely to you jonathan as this is mostly your platform i will continue to be mexican yes <laughs> i will in fact oh continue <laughs> <laughs> but like different superstitions in different ways to kind of like I am to going to bring be culture into this a fully Mormon girl being pull being awakened to Cthulhu shit and have some deconstruction there. I will say the direct question to you, Jonathan, was: Are you bringing your chunkla plus one 
and your Vicks vapor rub, but I was trying to open it to the group. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody in chat asked that. It wasn't just out of Erica's brain specifically. No, I, no, I, know, I, know. I, I, I saw it in the thing. And even if even if you did think about it, I'm not gonna get upset about it. Uh I will be <laughs> self-inserting a lot of my beliefs growing up regarding Los Espookies and my fears of <laughs> um of paranormal things. So yes, you're gonna see. Like I said at the beginning, this is very much a love letter to my family and to my culture and to the way that I grew up. So you're going to very much see a 16, 17-year-old Jonathan dealing with these things in, in aforementioned time. So, yeah. And uh, about the rest of them, I don't know how much self-insert everybody else is with so their culture. Much. Uh, for my character <laughs> specifically, like, so I, I, I'm two Asians, right? I'm Japanese and Korean. But for me, Korean heritage was never, like, a, a super big thing because my mom while she grew up in korea was also very american because my grandfather my grandfather was like a white dude uh but i think this is really interesting for me to be able to explore a lot of that folklore and a lot of their attitudes towards like spooky scary which is usually like oh look at that thing over there that's cool let's not let's just not let's just not <laughs> got like gumiho and like the one that's just like a guy who got decapitated once and is like the face is on the stomach now uh, love that one. Uh, um, your eyes, not your hands. Yeah, sh Christ. Uh, but I don't know. I, I, it's gonna be just like me, but slightly more Korean. I, I think it's nice to be given the chance to. I swear that wasn't a bit. Uh, no, to no. be given the chance to like explore this other culture that I didn't really get to be entrenched in growing up, but have started to entrench myself in as I've grown older. Um, so this will also be uh, a very a, a very young Chris dealing with spooky scary. Oh. I love that actually. Love that a lot. You learn as your character learns. Mm -hmm. Uh which will be really cool. Uh any other thoughts on Cool. Oh, this is so great. I'm really excited. Um <laughs> So our energy peaks at a certain point, and then just yep. it was all during the it was during the character creation, and now we're like, oh, and then this is now we don't we want to so interrupt serious. each other. Oh, I'm tired. Jeez. Was it good for you too? Was it good for you too. <laughs> Up and there it goes again. Okay. And if cool. anybody in the audience or cast notices mm -hmm. any similarities between the game and any Latina folklore, no, you didn't. Nope. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna need a drink. With that being <laughs> said, I think that's actually kind of coming off of Chris's comment, a perfect way to kind of segue into what m will be seen, um, especially when we talk about trigger warnings for games. Um, what the audience will most likely expect. Um, we, as 5% Chance, will have these up for every game, but it's also nice to kind of talk about and explain a little bit more um, of what will happen. And because it is a horror game, there's a lot that's going to go mm -hmm. going on, especially a game that revolves around sanity um, and other entities that come out of that. So I'm going to pass this off to Chris to talk about this I... a little bit more further. Yes, I'm trying to, there was the list I had that I swore I sent to y'all and I'm trying to find it right now, but I'm not. And that is okay. And if I don't find it in the next two seconds, I'm just going to go from memory. Oh, I'll... Um, yep, I found it. Um, <laughs> so it's going to be a little bit all over the place. Some of this stuff are things that me and the cast have talked about, and I'm just going to highlight them really quick as well. Other ones are things that I had included in the casting call that I posted a while ago. But the things you're not guaranteed to see, but very likely will see um, body horror, primal fears, general spooky atmosphere, all types of carnival things with an absolute possibility of clowns. Again, I have no idea where the story is going to go because it's going to depend on where my players take it. Um, what else you could see? I will say harm to animals, harm to children with a huge caveat on both. Number one. You will not see any harm to children outside of these four children, these teenagers. I know a lot of times we don't think of these, teenagers these as children. Kids. I am. These I four am. kids. Um, <laughs> and I say harm to animals, I'm but I do not mean any active harm. Uh, Neither baby. will any harm to animals. I'm talking over y'all is going to be done off camera. The only harm you could see is dead animals. 
Um, besides that, you have things like bugs, uh, creepy crawlies, um, they're the th and adult language. But the two ones I will also highlight, or the three I will highlight the most at the end, um, drug usage is a pop is a possible one. Um, again, I have talked to everybody in this show, and there are lines to make sure everyone's comfortable. There is a level, and I don't like using this word, so I'm going to define it a different way, but a sense of gaslighting. What's not acceptable and what you won't see is the players telling one another that, you know, they're crazy. But what you will see is, yeah, sure, maybe that happened, but I didn't see it. I don't think it happened. And, like, the disbelief in stories from people based on one's uh, lived experience. And then another big one that you see in Call of Cthulhu is a sense or a loss of player agency. Again, that's something I I love my players to be autonomous of their own characters, so there will very likely be opportunities for loss of player agency. But what you'll see in my GMing is it's more of a description of an intense feeling that they're going through. For example, let's say Frankie looks at Sam, and I'll tell Fr I'll tell Charm, hey, Frankie feels like if he doesn't run away from Sam right now, that like he's going to faint. And I put that I put that up to Charm to decide how he what Frankie would do in that scenario. Um, and I'll I'm gonna be reading through the trigger warnings at the beginning of every session. I will also say then, as I say now, all of these shows are recorded. They will be posted to YouTube afterwards. So if at any point something's happening in the game that you're not comfortable with, pause it. We're not going anywhere. Take a step away. And if you don't feel comfortable coming back to it that night and you want to catch up another time, just do that. I'm not going to take it personally if anybody in the audience has to step away because something got a little bit too um, triggering for them. No problem with that. I think I hit those on the head. You did. You hit them so fantastically on the head. Um, oh. Oh. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that was Erica's um, in my turn. <laughs> Yep, that's my intuition. Oh my god. <laughs> Do you want us to leave? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, and that's the thing, though, is like always and forever, especially whenever we do games like this over here at 5% Chance, is like one, I will say we are still learning as a channel. Um, so we also take safety tools for both our players as well as our audience very seriously. And if you ever, ever, I will say this, feel like we missed something, please let us know. Um, as we are delving into this and we are always learning both as people and as humans, um, both as players, as creators, as just beings on this earth. Um, so we are always up for your feedback. Send us anything on socials, things like this. Um, this is a great way to kind of recap, like to end the evening, I think. Um, so I'm going to briefly give this back to the cast. <laughs> what do we do? I said briefly, Chris. I did. I heard you say I heard it. I'm innocent. Um shout yourselves out where they can find you next before next week any of those things um and i will popcorn this backwards so charm you can start this off awesome yeah i'm excited to be a part of this uh like i said first times are a rare thing to attach yourself to and i couldn't feel more supported by this channel's chat and the collaboration of these brilliant minds i'm really excited to uh, enjoy myself and I can tell I will be looking forward to hosting you guys on my channel in the future and that is Old World Charm um, and I will be I can be found on Twitch every night pretty much running D&D &D or some variation of uh, role playing storytelling games uh, so find me there give me a follow right now and I'd love to see that wonderful energy that you guys brought to this chat that's awesome vibes in mine so thank you and I'm going to popcorn to, um, gosh, the person whose facial hair is just so on point right now. Not you, Scarlett. Jonathan. I was like, are you talking I, I, about yourself? I was going to make a joke, but that felt <laughs> A rude. little bit. I was myself. <laughs> Who else? Oh, shoot me. Um, 
<laughs> oh, Literally, man. Uh, oh, my hypnotized. Hypnotized. I just want to start this. Uh, no, but thank you guys so much for for this this platform and for allowing us to share the story and to tell it. Very excited. Um, Latinos against spooky shit. You can find me on all platform as Latinos against spooky shit, except Twitter because my name is too long and I didn't think about marketing uh, probabilities. So it's against spooky on there. But um, you can find me streaming. You can find me posting. I'm a part of a couple other projects coming in the work. So keep an eye out. And I'm going to pop one over to Scarlet. Hi, I'm Scarlet. You can find me on Scarlet64 pretty much everywhere. I play a lot of TTRPGs here on Twitch. And I talk about TTRPGs on Instagram and Twitter and TikTok. And I guess I'm going to popcorn over to Chris Santhemophiles. It's uh, briefly, Chris. briefly Chris. Oh, uh, briefly Chris. Christ. <laughs> can can we have that as a running bit in this show? I just never have my full thing. This is always a different name. <laughs> Your name uh, is just so long. <laughs> I am briefly Chris, also known as Hamasamakun. That's H A M A S A M A K U N on all social media platforms. Uh, most actively on I'm gonna say Twitch now, uh, where I talk about stuff. I hang out. I wear a maid outfit every so often. Um, it's a fun time. Uh, and also on Instagram and TikTok, which is where I do all my short form content. Uh, if you like memes, you can hang out. I'm also in a handful of other things. Hot Asian D&D is coming back eventually. And there's probably some other RPG stuff that I plan on doing. Uh, <laughs> love you. Who am I? Uh, Chris. The one true Chris, one might say. The one, the one true Chris. Um, the one hello. True. I'm going to be your lovely GM for this game, leading the pack of. I don't even know what to call y'all. Yeah, I'll come up with a team name. Um, but you can find me on D and D Imposter, uh, on all socials. You can also find me playing Key, a crazy ministry member, in a Vampire the Masquerade game through Vancouver by Night. Yeah. That's it. So before we end this evening, I think there's one more question you have, Chris. I need each of my players to roll me a D, like D100 and D10. Roll me percentile. Okay, but like, what if we? <laughs> what if we just disconnect the call and say, <laughs> "Yeah, what if uh, my internet is actually going out right now?" Then I'll pick your number. I'm not a <laughs> pussy. I'll do it. I am one, but I'm doing it anyway. That's and as great. they find these dice and roll this <sighs> mysterious roll. Um, yeah, we end this evening. No, nope. I got a sixty-two. Oh wow, 62. someone else got a sixty-two. Night forty-eight. Forty-eight. What are they? <laughs> Hold on. Uh, we will end this stream. Twenty-seven. Twenty-three. Twenty-seven. Okay. All right. So Tron oh. and I are dead. Um, so we'll we'll get back to that next week. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh good. I rolled low. This next week. Six, six you will have to tune us. Tune in next week for the first episode of the Dread Carnival, um, where we will meet in the carnival for the first time. Rory, Frankie, Sam, and the other Isaiah. one. <laughs> <laughs> um, I said it very like whispery. <laughs> and you guys um, all do your little hand thing at the same time, yeah. like take right. a oh my gosh. You guys, which yeah, way are we going? Little... <laughs> Karate club. As always, we're gonna five percent chance. Wow! So it's how cat style. style. I have you all. Cat stance. Cat as four. The of these chaotic cats <laughs> into wow. the evening. Wow! 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 We look forward to seeing you next week, same time on Thursday, nine p.m. for the first episode. Um, until then, you can maybe see us on sunday check out our socials we might have the idiot's guide to day aside but you can definitely check out the ash and jay committee that will be streaming on wednesday um as they have disconnected from mother and they might be in a careening city of weird things we don't know what's going to happen there so We'll see you back Thursday for this this cast. Until then, it's always a 5% chance of absolute chaos. See you next time. <laughs> Bye. Bye.